This is the Untold Italy Travel Podcast and you're listening to episode number 221. Ciao a tutti and benvenuti to Untold Italy, the travel podcast where you go to the towns and villages, mountains and lakes, hills and coastlines of Bella Italia. Each week, your host, Katie Clark, takes you on a journey in a search of magical landscapes, history, culture, wine, gelato, and of course, a whole lot of pasta. If you're dreaming of Italy and planning future adventures there, you've come to the right place. Hello everyone, we're back with another Italian wine episode and this time we're heading over the Tyrrhenian Sea to Sicily, where the wine is truly magnificent and undergoing somewhat of a renaissance. Our friends Olivia and Andrea from Italian Wine Tales are back to tell you all about this unique wine and fascinating area of Sicily. But before we get started, I had a look back on my notes from our last episode about wine, the one on Brunello di Montalcino that we recorded before my trip to Italy in February and March. And I had to laugh because there I was talking about luggage allowances and being careful. But on that trip, I did actually have to buy yet another bag to accommodate a special wine purchase, among other things. This one was from a unique winery in Venice. And I'm sure you're wondering, how can they make wine in Venice? But they do. And perhaps we will manage to get the team from there on the podcast one day. Obviously, they don't make millions of bottles of that wine, so it's quite exclusive and the story behind it is really very fascinating. Anyway, I just had to have a bottle to take home and there started my luggage issues. Will I ever learn? Right, so let's get back to Sicily and in this case, we'll be visiting the northwestern corner of the island, which is definitely off the beaten path for most visitors. We visit this area on our tours of Western Sicily and just love how untouched and traditional this part of the island is. Here you'll find the iconic salt pans and windmills and ancient ruins of Segesta and Selinute, but we're here to talk about wine today, so let's get started. Chin chin. Bentonati, welcome back to the Untold Italy podcast, Olivia and Andrea. Ciao, Katie. Hi, all. Thanks for having us again. Here we are, back again. Just been seeing you in real life in Rome <laughs> and ready to talk about wine again. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. I was just telling the listeners about my ongoing challenges resisting buying wine when I'm in Italy and then trying to get it home intact. <laughs> I'm such a sucker for an unusual wine story and we definitely heard one in Venice, didn't we? Oh, my God, it was amazing. And, yeah, we didn't encourage Katie for wine purchasing at all, as you can imagine. (laughs) None whatsoever. But it did arrive back intact along with my extra, extra bag, extra, 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 because I had to get another bag, as always, (laughs) for the wine and the chocolate. Wonderful. (laughs) Yeah, it was wonderful. So today we're going to chat about masala wine from Sicily. But first, can you quickly remind everyone who you are and why you're so passionate about Italian wine? So everyone, I'm Olivia. I'm an Australian living here for the last five years. Um, And we're the founders of Italian Wine Tales. So it's an online one-on-one guide to everything you need to know about Italian wine. And this is Andrea. I'm Andrea. I'm uh, from Piedmont originally. I've been working in restaurants before and I'm taking the sommelier course with Olivia. Yes, and they're doing an absolutely wonderful job educating people about the diversity of wine, the over 400 varieties and so many things to learn about the terroir and why each grape's important and all of those things. And I think today we're talking about some wine variety that's a little bit different to the others that we've discussed in the past and we do have quite an extensive catalogue now of wine episodes so do go check out those Uh, but today we're going to be talking about masala and you know I don't know too much about it but I do think of it as a sweet or dessert wine is that right? Yes it's absolutely correct so today we're talking about masala as you said so we're talking about the one that is produced in the island of Sicily, so in the Mediterranean, of course. Um, more specifically, we're talking about the western part of it. And I don't know if you knew, Katie, but in Sicily, they've been producing wine for over 6,000 years. So a long history of winemaking there, for sure. 
Sicily as the most vineyards planted in Italy and is a leading producer of organic vineyards in the country. So it's a big player when it comes to wine in Italy. But just before we go on, yes, they do make sweet wine, sweet marsala wine, but it's also dry and semi-dry. So there's something for everyone if you are interested in trying marsala. Now, there are only 21 wineries that produce marsala, but back in the days when it was more popular, we had over 200 producers of marsala. So it was way, way more popular back then, but still today is appreciated. I remember marsala. I think, you know, my parents may have had a bottle of it stuck under the cupboard or something like that to get pulled out after dinner. You know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of sherry or, you, you know, and actually... Sherry had a bad name for a long while, but if you've ever tried Pedro Jimenez from Spain, that's like Sherry on another level. So I'm hoping Marsala is a little bit like that. Yeah, exactly. You can. So I think everyone's had an experience with the cooking version of Marsala wine, which is really cheap and it's been aged for just a year. But yeah, you can definitely find sherry, like versions like sherry and port that are just as good, but they've been aged for, let's say, 10 plus years. So very different to the cooking version of Marsala. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. So and what sort of grapes do they use and what's the process in this wine? So Marsala wine is a fortified wine. So that's why it's different to the other ones we've spoken about. Um, it's produced using normally the Grillo grape. So Grillo is the symbol of the Trapanese wine region, which is where Marsala is produced. Um, and so they take a base wine like Grillo and they add a grape spirit, which is normally brandy, and that boosts its alcohol content, so like 15 to 20% alcohol content. And then it goes through an ageing process of which it can be anywhere from one year, so that's your cheap cooking stuff, two years for a little bit better, a nice in between might be around four or five years. So that's your superiore, reserva kind of wines. Um, All the really top shelf stuff will be like 10 plus years age. So you can imagine in the scale of the of the different marsalas that are produced, big um, differences in quality and of course taste. That's just a really good overview and I'm really intrigued to know what, does it get sweeter as it ages or does it, is it drier? How does it work? So there's all different kinds of marsala in the sense that there's different colours, first of all. So you can have amber and gold and ruby. The amber one is generally the sweeter one because they add cooked grape must to it, which serves as a sweetener. And then, yeah, within that, you know, you can play with obviously the different sugar levels and the aging so you can produce dry, semi-dry or the sweet marsala and then the different aging from one to more than 10 years. So um, it sounds like a very versatile drop. <laughs> so is it, is it a wine that you would drink like as an aperitivo or is it something that you would drink um, during dinner or with dessert? Well, dry masala, it's good for aperitivo Mm -hmm. if you want to have something different than your usual spritz when you're in Italy. Uh, While instead the semi-dry would be perfect when paired with a dessert. Or or even like cheeses. Yes, exactly. Blue cheese or something like that. And the sweet one instead would be good with chocolate. Mmm, delicious. So, okay, so you can just (laughs) keep on the masala for your whole meal. I mean, just remember the alcohol content's quite high, so drink with yeah, moderation. Between fifty and twenty percent. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. We want to. We want to <laughs> keep a lid on that one a bit. <laughs> Savor it. Savor it. <laughs> so obviously, in Sicily, you're probably getting a lot more sunshine than in other parts of Italy that we've talked about before. Even Tuscany is probably like way more sunnier, so you do get that higher alcohol content and all of that. So. What's the terrain like around there? What uh, what can we see if we go visit Masala? Of course, we were there last year together yeah. and then I was back in that region for our I'm told Italy Western Sicily tour and it's stunning. It's a lot it's really different to the east coast of Sicily, so it's a lot more kind of Arabic in feeling, um, a, a lot less touched, so very about nature and na- natural reserves. Um, it's not built up like the east part of, of Sicily is. There's the salt pan, so that's kind of the famous symbol around this region, so in around Trapani, which is just above Marsala, the town and the region of where this wine is produced. Yeah, it's really beautiful, but it's very unknown compared to the eastern part of Sicily, I would say. And, of course, there's the coast. 
So you've got the coast breeze and the, that marine um, salinity in the wines and it's lovely, very beautiful. Tell me more about those salt pans. That was fascinating seeing them last year on our tour. I had never seen how salt is made and it's absolutely stunning. So there's these salt pans that are like, I guess, kind of flat yeah. um, layers of where the salt's made with a, like a layer of water over yes. the top from the sea that comes in over these pans. It washes over, yeah. Yeah, it washes over and then they've got the big well, windmills. windmills. Yeah which are so striking in the distance because if you can imagine it's completely flat and then you've just got all of these windmills, um, you know, along the terrain, which are really striking and it's stunning at sunset or sunrise with the sky. It's normally like a beautiful shade of pink um, against the blue with the sea and these windmills. It's really picturesque. That sounds divine. And did you enjoy a glass of masala as you watch the sunset? (laughs) Yeah, we yes, absolutely we did. did, yeah. And, you know, during the tour in that day, we visit both Marsala for the tasting and the salt pan. So it's really the perfect combination. You know, I love um, when we create these tours and then I don't get to go on them. It's not fair, really. <laughs> I'll have to go in, in the next year or two. But, yeah, that's an area of Sicily that I personally would really love to visit because, like you said, it's very undiscovered in, for the most part by most of us English-speaking travellers. So we know what to eat with masala, know where to drink it. We know where to go. Can you tell us some wineries to visit that people might enjoy if they do have the adventurous spirit and head out that way? Absolutely. So as we mentioned at the start, there's not that many wineries making Marsala anymore, but there are still the big historical wineries making it. Yes. So we would definitely recommend heading to Florio or Pellegrino. So they're the two most historical, famous um, wineries. They're going to speak English there. You can book online. I think the main thing to consider when you go and visit is that generally they're not open on a weekend, okay? So Sunday is a hard no for those wineries. Um, Saturday mornings is a maybe, but your best bet is Monday to Friday. And if you want an historical note about these wineries, especially the Florio one, you have to know that Florio is a very important family in Sicily. You can think about a very industrial family in Sicily that helps Sicily to grow. And in fact, if you want to read a book while you're on a a totally Sicily West tour, you can buy a book which is called uh, The Lions of Sicily, which is this series of books which tells the story of this Florio family from the beginnings to when they became rich. And most of it is, of course, linked to Marsala. Ah, I love it. I love a good book recommendation. Do you know how far this family goes back? Is it like very historic? They originally came from Calabria, so the region that is bordering Sicily uh, in the 1700s and they moved to um, Palermo originally they had a spice shop there and from there they grew into uh, exporting spice all over Europe and they grew into other sectors of course wine and many more I don't want to spoil it all but it's a very beautiful book the, the Alliance of Sicily is the first in a series of books. Thanks Andre. and so like this is a region that you know it's quite far from Palermo though so we would probably need a car to get around right yeah absolutely we were looking up exactly how far it is from Palermo before and it's a good two-hour drive and I think uh, just as a side note um, when it says two hours on uh, Google Maps it probably means two and a half to three Because you're not working with very well-managed roads and the signage can be and the Google Maps situation can be a little challenging, just speaking from experience. (laughs) Yeah, good point. So if you're driving, do take care and obviously please do not consume a lot of alcohol if you're driving because you really need your wits about you on that road especially. You know, the other advantage of coming on tour is we do visit a lot of wineries and you have no restriction on your indulgence. (laughs) We we are quite happy for you to fall asleep on the bus as we make our way to the next destination and uh, you can enjoy that as you go. No car required. Okay, so while we're in the area, is there any other types of wine that we should try? Yes, there is. So 
Masala is definitely interesting to try, I think, also for the historical reasons. But while you're in the area, you need to, of course, also try Grillo. Grillo, as I mentioned at the start, is like the symbol of the Trapanese wine region. Um, It's a white wine, if that wasn't clear before. It's quite fruity. You can think of it a little bit like a fuller-bodied version of a Pinot Grigio, which I'm sure most of our listeners are familiar with. So think of like lemon and apple, those kind of flavors. Yes. You can try a variety, a wine called Contessa Entellina, which is a small DOC created just in 1993, so quite recent. And you can try it in both red and white and rosé as well. You have the famous Nero d'Avola, which is also a red wine, which is quite popular down in the south. It's all produced in that area. So Contessa Entellina is the small wine area that we go to on the Western Sicily tour. It's at the end of the of the tour. And, yes, yeah, so you can try Sauvignon there, Viognier. They've got a lot of international grape varieties there. Um, and the winery that we go to on tour also has, of course, some Indigenous um, varieties that you won't find anywhere else. They're literally the name is something like Antique Grape. If, if it was translated. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear they've got some rosé there too because I'm actually in my rosé season. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm loving a rosé at the moment. I can't stop ordering it for some reason. Anyway, we can't just do wine tasting and sitting by the salt pan tasting wine. What else can we do in this region? So this region is absolutely beautiful and quite close to Marsala along that area. If you keep going up north, back up towards Palermo, there's Erice. It's a beautiful medieval hilltop town. I think that's my favourite along the west coast. Um, It's tiny and when you go up there, it's a complete temperature change too. So pack a jacket. They often have what I like to call the mists of Avalon descend because it can be very (laughs) misty. Um, In fact, when Andrea and I visited last year, it it was exactly like that. Just, yeah, super misty. But when we went on the tour, it was a beautiful, bright, sunny day. So nice to have kind of both experiences. The mist adds this kind of interesting supernatural element up there. Um, And there's a famous pastry shop up there that on our tour we go to and we have a really special experience learning to make traditional pastries with the Sicilian owner of the shop. And she's a woman in her 90s now and she's still coming to the shop every day. And obviously her whole family work in that shop as well. So you get to meet everyone in the family. (laughs) Um, Yeah, and that's a really special thing to do. Um, in the West Coast. And then there's also Scopello, um, which is another town along the West that we visit on tour. And Andrea and I were there last year. So Scopello was where, on the West Coast, they're really famous for tuna fishing. Yep. That doesn't happen anymore, uh, hasn't for quite some time, but that's where a lot of their industry was, a lot of the money. Um, and Scopello, they had, what do you call it, a tonnery? I reckon, yeah. Yeah, like a tuna fishing um area and so you can go there and you can do a tour learn all about it but it's not just for doing this tuna fishing tour that you would go there it's striking it is stunning and there's the beach and these kind of um the rocks the faraglioni Faraglioni, Faraglioni are in the distance and really stunning and everyone as soon as we got there on tour was like can we dive into the water (laughs) it's just oh it's stunning and there's some great restaurants town yeah it looks a bit like when i saw it i gasped actually i thought it looked like a bit like the amalfi coast but a little bit more undiscovered <laughs> and uh, i hope i'm not overselling it because i can see a stampede of people <laughs> going straight to scapello but um yeah it's it is a very beautiful beautiful place It sure is. And the other thing as well is if you are interested in history, I mean, all of Italy is interesting, right? But there's a lot of temples that you can go and visit. So So if you keep going south down from Marsala, um, like we do on the tour, we stop in at Menfi for a few nights. And near to Menfi, we go to Salinunte, which is, oh, my God, an incredible temple. It is absolutely striking. And from there at sunset, You've got the view of the temple, the sun going down, and the beach. It's one of the most well-preserved, too. Like, it's centuries old, but it's still very, very well-preserved. Mm, so you get a real is. feeling. Yeah. Greek or Roman? Greek. Greek. Because yeah. in the area of Sicily, there was a big uh, Greek influence. Like, going even 
further south, driving two hours, you get to Agrigento, which we have a valley of temples. Mm. I know that that place is amazing. I I can't stop thinking about Agrigento actually. So, but yeah, it's a, like again, it's a little bit of an effort to get there. But oh goodness, it is worth the go because it's just stunning. You you kind of think, how are these temples just stuck here for two thousand years? Over yeah, nearly two and a half thousand years, and they're just kind of there. Yeah. It's amazing. I think what was interesting too, when we were in um, Salinunta on the tour, we were obviously with a, a guide who was wonderful to bring it to life, but even talking about how the temple and kind of more modern history intercollided, we were looking at bullet holes in the temple from the Second World War, which was just like, wow. You know, it's just, yeah, it was really interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of that history in Italy as well that, you know, I think it may be a little painful almost and still very raw to remember but I'm glad someone pointed that out actually because it's something that you know I think we should remember you know and it all costs a void in the future so yeah so it sounds like uh we should all head to western Sicily to check out this masala wine um I did have a question does it actually go with the tuna or is it a bit too strong maybe I don't know that's interesting. Well, yeah. next time we're there, we will try and we'll let you know. Because Maybe I, the aperitif yeah, version, the dry masala, def- yeah, I would recommend, I not the sweet one. Definitely not the sweet one. Maybe the, the dry version, the flavours are like bay leaf, yeah. olive, briny. So maybe, maybe. but Maybe with the tinned version of the tuna? Or maybe the tinned version. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it with the uh, normal tuna because it's like nearly red meat, quite mm. intense, so. Mm. Not the best pairing, probably. Mm. And by the way, tinned Italian tuna is nothing <laughs> like what we get. I mean, seriously, people, go do yourself a favour and go down to your Italian delicatessen and buy yourself a tin of tuna and you will experience what it is really like. And, in fact, I had some homemade preserved tuna in oil that uh, our dear friend Pier Paolo gave me and he dropped it off. It was a very elaborate plan to get this tuna to us, but oh my goodness. I was like, this is incredible. If you like any type of fish, it, it, uh, honestly, mm, I'm drooling about it. <laughs> Amazing. So, <laughs> sounds very nice. So I think Marsala, yeah, I definitely need to have. I think I can just see myself sitting by those salt pans with my glass of uh, Marsala in hand. It just always astounds me how Sicily has so much to see and do on a relatively small patch of land. And, you know, when you look at it, it might seem like you could see most in a week. But having been there a few times, I laugh that I once thought that as um, you really need more than a few weeks in that beautiful island to do it justice. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, you know, Sicily for wine, we will have to do something else on Sicily together with wine because it is amazing for wine. They've got the most vineyards in Sicily in all of Italy. Yes, so many varieties. Oh, yeah. okay. And also, of course, we haven't even talked about the Mount Etna wineries, so that takes full advantage of the volcanic soil. So that's an exciting one that we'll have to have coming up. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We have to just work our way through all of these. We haven't, we have, we've barely scratched the surface at this stage, but um, hopefully people can see the potential in following a wine lover's trip of Italy. Okay, now if our listeners are keen to learn more about Masala and Sicilian wines, how can they stay in touch with you and Italian Wine Tales? So you can check out our blog, italianwinetales.com. We're also on Instagram and we've got an email newsletter. And we've also got a Facebook group called Italian Wine Lovers that you can join. And if you're interested, uh, we're also preparing a podcast of our own that is going to come up later on this year. We'll keep you posted. But yes, this is our next project. Oh, well, your podcast pros now. (laughs) I like to think I've given you some good training. (laughs) But, Dan, a little reminder to everyone, if you are one of our lucky tour guests coming along to our trips to Sicily, exploring Marsala, Mount Etna and other wines from this exciting island, you can take advantage of Liv's expertise as well as that of our other tour hosts to help you order wines to send back home. And also Liv is in charge of choosing the wineries we visit and is very particular about 
where we go. I mean, it's a really tough job doing these wine tastings, isn't it, Liv? Someone has to do it, Katie. <laughs> I'll force you. I'll force you. <laughs> okay. Grazie, Liv and Andrea. Thanks for sharing your knowledge of this delicious wine with us on Untold Italy. Grazie mille, Katie. Thank you for having us, Katie. Thanks, everyone. Ciao. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Ah, beautiful Sicily, so many possibilities, and that's just the wine. There's a saying by German poet Goethe, which is to have seen Italy without having seen Sicily is not to have seen Italy at all, for Sicily is the clue to everything. And I have to agree, I've not met anyone who has regretted their time on this magnificent island. We have two amazing week-long tour itineraries in Sicily. One departs from Palermo and visits Ricce, Scopello, Cefalu, and, of course, Marsala and the Salt Pans. The other leaves from Catania and explores the Baroque Val di Noto, Taumina, and Ortigia. Of course, there is plenty of wine tasting and food exploration too. Something tells me that a glass of sweet Marsala wine will be the perfect accompaniment to a delicious cannolo. If you would like to learn more about these trips, head on over to the Untold Italy Tours website where you will find a complete day-by-day itinerary of these trips and more. As always, we've provided a full list of the wines, grapes and places mentioned as well as a link to our Sicily Tours into our detailed show notes for this episode found at untolditaly.com forward slash 221 for episode 221. Make sure you have a poke around our website while you're there. There are literally hundreds of articles designed to help you build your dream trip to Italy. We're very proud of the information we send out into the world. It's based on the love for Italy and checked regularly so you know it's up to date. Grazie. Thank you to all our wonderful listeners for your ongoing support of Untold Italy. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, then it would be amazing if you gave us a rating or review in your favourite podcast app. That helps us reach more Italy-loving travellers just like you. We've had some absolutely gorgeous reviews lately from Rexy 2024, Tropical Bedtimes, Falcon Cross and Sad Man 1211. Keep them coming. We absolutely love them. On next week's episode, we're headed to Venice and I'm going to share my favourite experiences to have when you visit this most beautiful and unique of cities. But until then, it's ciao for now. The Untold Italy podcast is an independent production. Podcast editing, audio production and website development by Mark Hatter. Production assistance and content writing by the other Katie Clark. Yes, there are two of us. For more information about Untold Italy, please visit untolditaly.com. <laughs>